All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fire Builders Live. My name, like always, Josh Corporal. Welcome. And like always, I am streaming live from Key West, Florida, from the porch, the infamous porch where there's roosters and iguanas and everything uh, all around. God knows what else is out there. Uh, today, we have very, very special guest, Dr. Nicole Ponda. Nicole, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I am. I'm pumped to be here. I'm really excited. <laughs> it's going to be good. I've been looking forward to this conversation ever since we last spoke, and I can't wait to dig into it with you. But before we do, let me explain to everybody listening, watching at home what we do on Fire Builders Live. We stream live. It used to be six days a week. Now I can just say often. <laughs> we stream live very regularly. It used to be six days a week. I'm thinking maybe two or three times a week moving forward. But hey, we'll just have to see. That's a surprise. Uh, but we take these big topics, these big ideas, these big goals, we break them down into small steps, things that you can do every single day to consistently improve. It's those little things that you can do in your life, those little changes, those little tweaks that really do add up and make the difference. Today is no different. I can't think of anybody that I would want to talk to about this more than Dr. Nicole because she, like, you know, is after my own heart, someone that keeps it simple, keeps it absolutely simple. That is the key. And let me tell you a little bit about what she has done with her life, loving wife, mother to three amazing sons. You know, she just like everybody, we all struggle with insecurities, with fear, with doubt, right? But she has learned how to overcome that as the founder of The Expressed You and a transformational business coach. She aims to help female entrepreneurs unlock the powers of their minds, creating individualized success and a roadmap to a purpose and a profitable online business. That's pretty cool. And I tell you, as you go down this road, as she'll be able to also tell you today, as you go down this road, there are a lot of things that you must consider. Things like resources, your market, your competition, all these things have the possibility to get you stuck, to weigh you down, right? It's very easy to distract yourself with social media and compare yourself with everybody out there and feel stuck in your business. But Dr. Ponda is here to tell you why it is so important to up-level your thoughts and your beliefs, right? On your way towards your version of success because it's the small little changes, those little tweaks, keeping it simple that are gonna make all of the difference in the world. I'm so excited that she is here. Dr. Nicole, thank you again for taking the time and welcome to the show. Thank you, wow, that was quite the introduction. <laughs> You're I, welcome. I feel like I want to have my husband introduce me to the kids like that when they get home. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Nicole is coming in the front door. Yeah, I think it might go better when they get home then. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. I, I really, uh, I'm so happy that we're able to make this work and uh, I'm so appreciative of your time here. I tell you, I like to start off the show. Tell me a little bit about what your day is like, where are you in the world, and what's a typical day like in Dr. Nicole's life? Okay, well, I am in Wisconsin, in Southeast Wisconsin, so maybe an hour and a half north of Chicago, if you're not familiar with that. Um, right now, it's actually 60 degrees, but it could be minus 20 tomorrow because this is the game that Wisconsinites have to live in. It's just, you'd never know what the weather's gonna be like here, but it is actually beautiful. Uh, a typical day for me, I it's pretty chill. Like I really keep it quite simple. I wake up, I have, I meditate every day, I journal. Um, then I usually take my son to school, which is kind of like me talking in the car while he just sits next to me and looks annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. That's, yeah, that's my twelve year old, and um, and then he'll usually say something as he gets out of the car, but. Then I, I always will work out like I love working out. It's just my way of really managing my energy and just clearing my head for the day. I used to kind of hold that off till later. And I just found that I did better if I moved my body first thing. Yep. Um, and then do you I'll do it. Did you used to go to a gym and now you do it at home? Like uh, like a workout, I, like yoga or something? I do go to a gym. No, you know, yoga is funny. I would think I actually would love that, but I just don't. I just want to look yeah. <laughs> Like I love lifting weights, so I, that's pretty much what I do at the gym. 
Um, yeah, and then I come home and right now in my business, it's really creation mode. So I'm getting to create different things in my program, which has been really exciting to focus on that because for a while I was kind of in another mode of audience building and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we'll usually go for a walk with our dog. My husband works from home too. So that, and then the kids come home and it's usually playing with duct tape and boxes and random things <laughs> <laughs> like couch cushions <laughs> and stuff like that. So yeah, that's our day. That's awesome. I mean, uh, it's great that you and your husband can both work from home. And so you're both there and you can both take care of the kids at family time. Like that's important. Yeah. 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 It is really, really nice to do that and actually be able to have a conversation because once they get home, it's harder for us to to do that. So we've really enjoyed that part of working from home together. Do you also want to kill them half the time? The kids? Yeah, like every yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a balance. Yeah. It's a balance, Josh. <laughs> it's very yep. But yeah, they're you know, you can't do anything right. But that's I a, still love them. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that is that perfectly describes my relationship with Elvis the Rooster, you know? <laughs> there you half, go. Half the time, I love him. Half the time, I just want to sell him to Tyson Foods, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, okay. So, I mean, the because I'm with you on the working out in the morning, I would do that all the time. It was just the best way to start out the day. Uh, mm -hmm. Just clears your head. And there's this really great gym right across the street from here. That's an old, it was like an old school boxing gym. We're talking like dirty, free weights. Uh, there was an old <laughs> boxing ring right in the center. It's like straight out of Rocky. It's awesome. It's the best that, place to go in the morning. That is a great outlet actually. I haven't boxed in a while, but I had for a long time. And it really was just like, I don't know. I just, it felt so good. Yeah. Not boxing bags, but yeah. It's Did really you, fun. Did you ever spar with anybody? Did you ever like go toe to toe? Not really. No, it was mainly the bag. Someone would try to do that. And I'd just be like, Let's not, no, like, I, just, I just like the bag. Well, yeah, no, it's, it, it's incredible. It's incredible how much, how many calories you burn and how like, you know, how, well, I'll tell you, okay. So, cause I did this in graduate school and when you're hitting the bag, it's, it's, it's obviously a workout. Like you're sweating, you're, you're having a great time. But as soon as you get in the ring with someone, even if it's sparring, the anxiety level goes up at like three notches, you know, like 300%. And you get tired so much faster. It's crazy. Just mentally, because you're in there with somebody knowing that they are trying to punch you in the face. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you I go. I mean, to get punched in the face. <laughs> no, no one really wants to get punched. But maybe that's a way that you can settle family disputes uh, in the future, you know, instead of just have we could. A, yeah. we could. It was a little bit of a ninja thing this morning where they're doing this. I don't even know what, what they're doing or what they had in their hands, where they found these items. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's just like stuff appears and then it just stays there in the living room. <laughs> Next Man. Nerf dart guns. Yeah. Oh, Nerf. Yeah. God, don't even get me started on Nerf. I love Nerf. Uh, well, so how about the, okay. So the, how did you get into, to what you're doing now with the empowerment coaching, right? You're, yeah. you're focusing primarily on women. Like, did you, you, you started your own businesses and that led you to a lot of the things you had to learn the hard way. And now you're just essentially trying to teach people how to do the same. Yeah. So, so I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I worked for in that profession for, I think it was probably 12 years before I started to feel like you know, something else, I'm supposed to be doing something else, which was a really scary feeling. But it kind of was at this point where somebody else would have looked in and thought, she's got it all, you know, we have three healthy kids, I have a good marriage, a nice house, like, friends, like had everything and really was at the height of my career. But I remember feeling like I was at my lowest point, like, I can't do this. How do people do this? And people would say, you just enjoy it, just enjoy it. And I'm like, this is not enjoyable. I am exhausted. I don't know how people do this. I feel like I'm supposed to do something else with my life, but I don't even know what that is. And it's just like, I felt so lost. And so it was, it wasn't pretty. Like you, again, you look at the outside, you look in from the outside and it really didn't seem that way. But 
that was when I decided like, okay, things have to change. And I know I'm not the only woman out there that's feeling this way. And there has to be an easier way. And so then there were, that's when I started as an entrepreneur and there were different iterations of that over the years. But I started in network marketing thinking, oh, well, then I'm gonna be fully supported. Someone's gonna be telling me what to do and so I cannot fail. And I really just ignored the fact that entrepreneurship is really more about your leadership, about the authenticity that you can create within that and the connection that you have with people. And I just thought it was about the doing still. So I kind of carried my my ways of being an employee as a therapist right on over to um, that business. And then it was a few years ago that I realized I really hadn't been letting myself even explore the thing that I really wanted to do, which was this coaching because it was an element of what I had done always, like really always, always done this and had taken other courses and had loads of continuing education. I actually like coordinated that. So I took hundreds of hours of continuing education every year. And I just finally said, okay, let's do this. And I started that business with a single Facebook live, basically just saying, look, here's what I'm doing. I'm, I, you know, if you're this overwhelmed person and da, 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 and you have something else in your heart you want to do, then let's talk. I had no offer. I had no website. I had nothing. And ended up filling a program that I, selling a program before I had actually built it so that I could co-create it with them. And that's where it all started. <laughs> that's where it all started. It takes a lot of guts to do that. I mean, like, especially I feel like most people get hung up on the, I need to create something first. It needs to be perfect. And then, and only then can I go and sell it to the world. And you did pretty much the exact opposite. We are like, we're flying by the seat of our pants here. Uh, but I feel like your enthusiasm and just your mannerisms, you're very trustworthy. And so I think that people just got that impression that you are like truly from the heart. Yeah. And I also, I was honest, like, here's what I had planned, like topics. I have ideas. I have so much that I could teach, but I really wanted it to be valuable to them. And I wanted their feedback and I wanted to make it just learn along the way with them as to what else they needed. So yeah, I was just really upfront and I felt like that was a benefit to them really. Well, how did it go as you went through and you co-created it with them? Like yeah, there must've been some challenges with that. Yeah. So the challenges were in the, when I very first started was I hadn't worked on my money stories. I hadn't quite charged enough. So I didn't have the uh, buy, you know, there's just such a transformation in the transaction and it has to be that certain level to help people stick with you a little bit more. So as I moved forward, then I created different resources so that they were able to do that and more of a community within a Facebook group that went along with my program. So each time I've done it, it has been completely different. Have you, each time you've done it, have you, like notched the price up slightly yeah for yeah. sure you also really changed what i offer within it and i think the, another big thing is instead of trying to do more i really shifted to um what is it that i want to create i really made it about them so i feel like when we focus before i'd focus on kind of this gap between where i was in my business and where i wanted to be and I started to just focus on the gratitude that I had for these people that were in front of me and really let that be the driver for everything and got so excited about that. And that really helped me to steer away from any of those, just all those thoughts of you not being good enough and why would I do this program when there's so many other people that have come so much further than me and, and all of those kind of stories I was able to get through by really just focusing on them. I dig it. I, I, I think that's the total way to do it. And it, it's, it sounds like that's what you were doing. You had mentioned this, like that's what you were doing for years before you made it official, right? Yeah. I mean, like, like <laughs> tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I, so I actually, um, well, in physical therapy, I would see quite often how as I was doing physical treatment, we would be talking about 
their feelings. So we'd be talking about what they were expecting to have happen with different treatments. And like they would just share their whole life story with me, which was amazing. And I was so honored that they trusted me with that. But so that's where I started to get more education and just how can we change the outcomes that we have in our life through our minds? So I took other things to learn about that as I was a physical therapist and they would, some people would joke with me, hey, thanks for the, thanks for the therapy. And they'd be like, for yeah. the therapy, right? Um, and even when I was in network marketing, I would literally talk people out of joining me so that they could go do the thing. Like it helped them discover the thing that was like breathing to them. That just felt light and felt fun and felt good. And to tell them to go do that. And we would talk about all the ways they could get started with that. Yet I didn't even see that like I wasn't doing that. <laughs> I was just like hiding behind this other business that I knew I wasn't really fully aligned with. I, I wasn't always aware of that. I just thought it was fear. I just thought, oh, I'm just scared, but no, it's okay. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna work harder. And then meanwhile, I keep having these calls that like, yep, you should do this other thing and trying to help them step into that. And you're like, sooner or later, at what point were you like, yo, Nicole, like start taking your own advice yeah. kind of thing, you know? Yeah. It was when I left, so I left my job because I told myself the story that it's just a matter of I need more time. I just need more time and then my business will grow. And um, I remember my coach at the time saying, you just have to take responsibility for what you're creating. And I really didn't understand what that meant. So I thought, yeah, I'm responsible. I get stuff done, like I'm a doer, right? Like I'm gonna work hard, I'm gonna really focus, even though I'd already had multiple like times of really focused months of work and digging in. Um, and it went down, my business, that business went down. And it was like so apparent to me, like that's because this isn't what I wanna do. And this is where the, this is where the selling feels hard and it just feels yucky. And so I, it was like this really, this is another hard moment of like, okay, it's this thing. I'm gonna do this thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a coach, and this is what and that's that's kind of when that part of it started, and it was such a different dynamic where things that used to feel really hard and forced, like I just went with my gut. I just listened to my heart for once instead of only being in my head, and just kind of kept going along with that. At that point in time, did you find like were you in? Um, I feel like a lot of people feel that way. And if they're not necessarily in a position, like say they're in a nine to five job right now, but they're kind of financially stuck, you know, uh, um, and they can't necessarily like they feel that thing on the inside, but they can't necessarily like push it all aside and jump into this new venture and whatnot. Uh, are there ways that you have found like to incrementally start to pursue what's on their heart? Yeah, absolutely. I, the first thing is to remember that this is the thing that you love. This is gonna be the thing that gives you energy instead of takes it. So it's, it's really a different dynamic than trying to add like another business that feels like a stress. So I think that's a really important piece of it. The second is, like I have clients right now that they are working, they are working full time and they're trying to step into something else. And so what we do is just what is what is the thing that you feel ready for? Like, what is that one thing that you're that slight stretch where you can still balance your job? You can still enjoy your life because it's not worth it if there's no like ability to balance. We talk about boundaries in other areas. So. Um, a lot of clients were saying yes to like everything in their job. They're doing all this extra stuff there. They're doing all this extra stuff at their kid's school and all this extra stuff everywhere. So we really kind of clear out like, what is it that you're really committed to? What is it that you hope to create? How do you want to impact people? And what if it's just one person for now? How can we step into just one, per you know, helping that one person or having that one client? And that's really where we begin because then they can start to see what's possible. And it's just that driver to help them build. I totally agree. Like that, that focus. I mean, we, we were talking earlier, like about keeping it simple and, and how to get people unstuck. And I think part of it, if from what I get from what you're saying, it's kind of like, it's kind of like 
you don't realize how much stuff you've acquired in your house until you go to move. And then you're like, what is all of this? Like, <laughs> why do we even have this? Right. And I feel like people acquire just to acquire. Right. And, and, and it's a temporary fix for a momentary, like momentary dopamine hit kind of thing. But then it all adds up and it, life is kind of the same way where you just do all these things. You pile on all these experiences, these things that you feel like you have to do. And then all of a sudden it's time to move. And you're like, God damn, like what, what am I doing? Like, what is important? If I had to throw all of this stuff away and there was the fire and I had to grab one or two things, like what would they be kind of thing? Uh, yeah. yeah. And I think that, that makes me think of something too, is we, we focus on the doing. So somebody says, I want to change my life. I want, I want to create something different. And so let me do more. Let me do different. Let me do more. Let me do different. But they don't look at what is doing. What is driving that action, Elvis, right? He feels it. Elvis does feel it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So like what is driving it is our thoughts and our beliefs. It's it's the you can't solve a problem from the same level of consciousness that you created it, right? So if your problem is I want to change my life, but you just jump right into doing, but you don't change your consciousness, your thinking, your beliefs, then you get the same result. Then it does continue to feel hard. So that's where when you change that and you start changing the expectations of like, oh gosh, I was telling myself that in order to be a good person, a good friend, a good wife, a good mom, I had to do all these things and I didn't even realize it. But because I was believing that, then I said yes to all these things. I had guilt when I said no, I couldn't ask for help. I couldn't change anything. So I think that's a huge thing. The other part is that 95% of those thoughts and beliefs are subconscious. So we're not even aware of them. We are literally just running from this program. And so then when we when we start to at least have an awareness of that, that that is happening, then we can look at those thoughts and beliefs and change them. And our, it doesn't have to be so hard. But I think that's where people get kind of like, scared to step into something new because they just think I'm already so busy and so overwhelmed. How am I going to do more to get there? Exactly. Like, and especially when it comes to like, they get that, you know, there's that stage if they have their own business, there's that one stage where it's like, it starts to dip at the very beginning and you have to pull yourself out of it. And the only way sometimes it seems that you can pull yourself out of it is by piling on more and more and more stuff. Uh, so I can totally resonate with that because that's, you know, that's a very real thing. And it turns out, you know, it doesn't always have to be that way. Like you might actually just step back and simplify things. And by the way, as you were talking and as Elvis so rudely interrupted us, uh, <laughs> uh, Tara said, oh boy, this is hitting way close to home. Yeah. So that, there you go. Like uh, that whole idea. Um, it's a, uh, it really is. It really is something I, I love. I love the idea of keeping it simple just because I come from a sailing background and everything has to be simple because you have to, if you have to fix it in unsavory conditions out at sea, like you can do it. Um, and so I love the idea of keeping it simple. And I'm curious as to how you have like kind of applied simplicity to your decision-making process nowadays. Yeah. So one thing is that it's a high value of mine, that it's simple, easy, fun. I believe that it can be. So I've really worked on shifting that belief that it can be because I didn't believe that it could be. I didn't ever, ex I had never experienced that in my childhood. I always saw hard, hard, hard. So that was one thing, but now it's, how can I make this more fun? So I ask myself, how can I make this more fun? I check in, like I do that gut check. Is this really going to be the right next step for my business? Because as we're growing, I'm, I too am involved in different things where I'm learning new, new ways to do things, right? But I used to completely disregard how I felt about it. It was just, well, this expert is telling me to do this, so I just need to do it. And it's just push through it. 
and just ignore how I'm feeling and ignore like any kind of things that are coming up for me, whether they be thoughts or like my body starts talking to me, like gut aches, headaches, like things like that. It's just like, nope, nope, we're just doing this thing. We're just doing this thing. So I check in and I use those together. Like logic has to go with that gut. And I trust myself. I trust that if something's showing up and I'm feeling really resistive, I'm pretty good now at, you know, determining is this a story that I'm in? Like, is there something I need to shift here? Or is this just, no, this just is, I don't want to do that. That is not fun for me. What would be more fun? And I've never thought that way. In fact, I'm pretty sure my youngest son was born just to show me how to have fun because I felt like I didn't even know how to have fun <laughs> until probably like when I, not even in the beginning of entrepreneurship, did I know how to have fun still? Like I didn't, it was like, that was broken on me. So I, this whole thing of like, I, if I feel something's really forced, I listen. If I'm feeling like I'm sitting down to write something for my program or do a post or whatever it is, and it's just feeling forced and not coming, I like go do something fun. Like what's fun for me? Like I love just getting outside. I go skiing every weekend where before I used to find something else I had to do. Like there was always some work that needed to be done that didn't really need to be done, but I would just find work and I would make it hard. So now with this prioritizing fun in my life has completely changed my business. By the way, what is your youngest son's name? Cal. Cal. All right. Publicly Cal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for showing Dr. Nicole how to have fun because <laughs> yeah. it's important. It's absolutely important. It is. Well, what would you say to, to the idea? Cause it, cause when you have your own business, there are certain things that just aren't going to be fun that you have to get done. So when you, uh, when you approach or when you come to those obstacles, uh, how do you, how do you approach it the same way? Yeah. So most of the things I enjoy in my business, I, I really try to say, is there a small tweak? So for example, like when I was being taught how to do, um, what was it? Like a challenge, right? I, all the things, I've done all the things, the webinars, the challenge, the master classes, the video series, da, 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 da. I just would ask myself, how could this be more fun? And one was choosing to allow it to be more fun, to just have this expectation that I had fun instead of having the expectation that I had to get it right. Um, with things like um, writing emails and things, I don't love writing copy. I allow myself to do one a week. So like I'm gonna send one email a week just to stay in touch with my audience. And I'm gonna do it when I'm inspired to do it. So typically it takes me no time because it's just like, Oh my gosh, I need to tell them about this. Just something that happened that day and reminds me of how I used to think and how it's changed now. And I try to give examples because I feel like it's hard to make it tangible of how, how does changing your thinking actually change your life? That's, you know, like that's hard. So I try to just like put examples of my, of my life. So I literally have an app on my phone, like the keep app, the, the notes app. And when I'm usually when I'm working like out, Google, like Google keep. Did yeah. You just yeah. Oh man, I use that all the time too. Yeah. I'm just yeah. working out and I just grab it and I just like, oh, tell them about this today. And then I'll go and I'll quick write it. And I'm grab my grammar is terrible. So it's just how it is, but it's fine. And I send it. <laughs> so, so that's how is I just approach it. If this doesn't have to be perfect, I allow the ideas to come to me when they can. I've hired people for things like tech that I really don't want to do, then it's how can I, this has to be something that's budgeted. Like this has to be something that I fit into my business because I hate it and it sucks the life out of me. Most people, <laughs> most people hate the tech. Yeah. The tech is the tough part. Yeah. Yeah. How well, is the tech with the podcast? I wonder. How, how is the tech with the podcast? Yeah. Oh, well, interesting. You bring that up. Cause, uh, I, <laughs> cause, cause with this particular show, I got some help really early on figuring how to take the audio from these live calls and put them through some AI based equalizing software, right? And so I, I literally just rip the audio. There's some piece of software that finds a YouTube video. It pulls all of the audio, takes a, creates a little MP3 file, 
And then I just drop that into this software. It cleans it all up, levels everybody, tacks on an intro and an outro, and then spits out a new MP3 that's all shiny and ready to go. And I just upload that to Anchor and it just gets spread to the world, like done. But you know, I love how everybody says all of their like tech accomplishments, like, oh yeah, yeah, I just whipped that up in three minutes. Like it took a lot of time to get that all squared away. Don't get me wrong. But now that it's done, it's so much easier. Like it's it's such a, a I don't have to get things edited and you know, and I feel like it shouldn't be because just like we're having a conversation now and it's totally unscripted and it's all live and people are watching and right. Uh I feel like that adds the energy and the funness to it as opposed to, I mean, I know you've been on podcasts where they're just like, all right, Dr. Nicole, uh, if you had $500 and you needed to start another business, where would you go? You know, like kind of thing. And then you give this amazing answer and then they're like, okay, next question, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, they don't even, so anyway, yeah, I don't want to make it fun. Yeah, and that's also less fun because then you're going to get in your head about getting it right. And and like that's just kind of the scenario that that would feel like, right? Whereas when it's more conversational. So yeah, so I think that's how I look at some of those other things I ha not have to do, but choose to do to promote my business. It's just, it's like off the cuff. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Well, okay, so that's a great segue because what I like to ask guests on this show is distilling all of the information every bit of it that is in your head into a singular idea, right? So for instance, as people try to kind of like cut away the things that they, you know, the, start listening to themselves, listening to their body, like kind of understanding what it is that they're telling themselves and then pursue the fun, seek the joy, so to speak. Uh, what would the, if you had to start somewhere, like if you had to teach Cal this, yeah, how, where would you start? I would start with having him tell me what he wants every day, like what, as if it already happened. So I, this was something that came from several coaches like down, but they said that, and I feel like it's something that's really impactful. So speaking your day, speaking your year, as if it already happened in the way that you want it to happen. And one of the things that I love to tell myself with that is, how I was so surprised and I never could have planned it that way. And it happened just perfectly in exactly the right timing. Um, but yeah, when we talk about reprogramming and shifting our thoughts and shifting our beliefs, I have a lot of strategies that I use for that, but I feel like that is a very simple one. It's just saying, this is you know, the things that you want to think, the things that you want to believe, the things that you want to have happen. And if you can do it as if it already happened, that's really, really powerful because our subconscious doesn't know what's real and what isn't real. Was well, that something then that you do when you wake up in the morning? Yeah, so that comes in after I drop Ethan off <laughs> where I just start talking to myself. I told myself how great this podcast was gonna go and how fun it was gonna be hanging out with Josh and Elvis. And I just was so grateful for the opportunity and the experience and, yeah. And so I talked about that. I talked about the walk that I'm going to take today. I talked about what a great time I'm going to have with my family tonight, celebrating my brother's birthday. And so like, I just speak that for the day and I'll speak it for, for the year as well. Um, if you wanted to write it, you could write it, but it's, there's just power in hearing these things over and over and over again. We can relate to saying things to ourselves that are, that, um, are not kind, that are not supportive of what we want to create over and over and over again to the point that it feels real, that it feels like our reality, like our thoughts become real because we've repeated them so many times that we don't know the difference. So it's basically just flipping that and repeating it with what you actually do want. Yeah, I love that. And, and, and articulating it because I feel like most people at the very beginning anyway, like know they want something, but they don't know exactly what it is until they actually try to like apply brain power to articulating it, you know, yeah. like, uh, like when you ask people, Hey, do you want to work or do you want some time off? They're like, Oh, of course I want some time off. Right. I, I wouldn't work. I would just, and then you say, well, what would you do with your time off? And they're like, I don't know. And, and you say to yourself, well, okay. So like, it's the same idea. Um, 
you know, you just want this hazy picture of it, but you have to articulate it clearly for it to come to terms, like come to pass. Yes. And I, I was so like that where I kept like wanting to grow my business, but I, I didn't really know what that meant. I didn't have a dollar amount or a number of people or any like actual results. Just like, I just want to grow my business. And like, <laughs> so it's something that I see all the time with my clients now. And I totally relate to it, but they, they don't know what they actually want. It's like, they'll focus on the, I don't know what I want when really they, they do know. So we can start with what don't you want <laughs> and then just flip it to what do you want? But yeah, it takes practice to really articulate that and say that. And first it might feel a little weird and it might bring up some of the thoughts and beliefs that are holding you back because it'd be like, I feel bad asking for that. I feel bad ask saying that I'm going to make this much money. Do I deserve that? Like, could that be, I don't think that could be easy. Like, and you'll just feel it that you know, that resistance come up as you speak it too. So it's really yeah. 100%, 100%. I will uh, bring this up too. Cause as you were talking about this, Lois said, you know, speak it into existence. It works. It will manifest. I agree. I, uh, you know, you just kind of have to do it and, uh, and you can do it whenever you want. If you have kids and you drop them off and you're alone in the car and you want to talk to yourself the entire way home, like do that. Uh, or here, like, man, I'm trying to think about where I would do it here. I feel like if I talk to myself here, everybody would just think I'm normal because there's all kinds of crazy people in Key West, you know? Go for it. <laughs> I actually would say I do this more than just once a day. Like, I do this anytime I can just sense myself getting in my own way. Like, okay, what's going on here? Like, nope, that's not what's happening. This is what's going to happen now. And here's, <laughs> and I just lead myself. I shift my attention um, by, by speaking it. Some people prefer to write it. That's fine too. But it's just bring your attention to what you want. So good follow-up question with that, right? And you kind of touched on it a little bit, but <clears throat> if you, it's not about doing it once or twice. It's really about consistently doing it over a period of time. So let's just say hypothetically that someone who has never done this before did it for the next 30 days. In your experience, what kind of things happen to you? Yeah, it's going to become your reality. It's going to feel like your truth. You know, it's not It's not going to feel like you're just saying this. You're going to say, yeah, that like if you're speaking for the next year, it's going to be, yeah, that's absolutely like you're going to stop doubting it so much. Like that's what's coming. Oh, that's what's coming. Great. I can't wait. Like this is what I did. Um, I, I took a few months off, three months off of really working my business in the end of last year just because of some family things that happened. And I just kept speaking. That's about the only thing I did was I made like really serve the clients that I had. But I really, I said, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm just so excited for my biggest launch yet in January. I had no idea how I was going to launch. I'm just like, it's going to be great. It's going to be so easy. It's going to come to me in the perfect time. And this is the amount of money I'm going to make. This is the number of clients I'm going to serve. And they're great. They're my dream clients. And I literally just got so excited about it that I remember it being mid-December and thinking, Oh gosh, I probably have to come up with that plan. What exactly am I doing? This is like two weeks away. <laughs> <laughs> I launched whatever, if you want to call it a launch. I basically told people, hey, my program's opening during Christmas week. Like probably what you could say is the worst Christmas week. And I hit my goal in January. I don't even know how. And with total ease. So this this is powerful. Like it really does come to believe to be this like. Trust. That's like part of how you trust yourself is you start speaking this truth that you want. And I tell you, you and I talked about this earlier. Like sometimes it doesn't always happen the way that you think that it's going to happen. And when it doesn't, right, you take, you learn from it and you move on. Like you, you continue with that reality that you're setting for yourself. Yes. Cause I had done earlier in the year, like, before that point that I decided to take some time off, I had done different big things in my business that were going to produce all these leads, right? Or just be the thing that was the momentum driving me forward. And when I didn't get the result, I told myself like, that's okay. That's going to be a great story. I'm going to get to tell them how, even though these things didn't turn out how I wanted them to turn out, 
I still had the result. I still believe that that result was coming to me. I just didn't know how I didn't get attached to the how, but I knew it was coming because I kept telling myself it every day. So of course it was, <laughs> it was coming. And even when I thought I was going to fall short just a little bit, I still was like, that's amazing. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Then I had somebody else like referred to me. And then, then I had another client. It was crazy. It was just like, that's awesome how that worked out like that. <laughs> It's amazing how, like, how powerful it is just to like put that stuff out into the world, you know, and just it. I, that's why I love your suggestion about the one thing that you can do is just speak that, speak it into existence. It sounds coming from an engineer's mouth, right? Like speaking into it, I like part of me is like, what the hell are you talking about, Josh? But I know exactly what you're talking about, and it works. Like mm -hmm. you are. It's like the whole, you're, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. If you don't have a, a very clearly defined goal, then you're just gonna go in a billion different directions. You won't ever, ever get anywhere. Um, so I, I totally dig it. I 100% I agree. I think it's awesome. And I encourage everybody to do that too. Like, like take us up on the challenge for God's sakes. Spend the next 30 days and, and, and talk to yourself and tell yourself what you want in the morning. And then, like, honestly, if you guys decide to do this, everybody that's watching right now, you should comment right now and let us know that you're going to do it. I challenge you. I challenge everybody. Uh, and then uh, and then come back and let us know. We'll follow up with you. Nicole and I will hunt you down and see how much it positively changed your life. Yeah. Yeah, really will. And Elvis. Elvis will be there, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of so, course. So, uh so here, so I mean like Lyndon, for instance, there you go. Because Lyndon is also uh, in the coaching space. And so she is also somebody that acts completely by intuition, with intuition. And it's incredible. Like the stuff that happens to her is unbelievable. It is like she has to write a book soon. Um, it is it is amazing. Oh, man. So we got Cindy saying, I accept your challenge, right? My mother is in. Hey, all right. That's good. Right, Lois says she's speaking a yacht, <laughs> a yacht into existence. Whatever you need, I mean, Lois can do it. She's, she's, uh, I. If anybody could do it, Lois can do it. Uh, so I'll tell you, like, it's powerful what you're talking about, and your, uh, your advice is resonating with folks. The other thing that happens too when you do that is because, because we'll immediately like our ego kind of goes to that how. Well, how is this going to happen? Well, how, how would that happen? That's not possible. But when you really just sit with this possibility and this curiosity and this excitement of what you're speaking, the how starts to come to you. Like it just it comes to you at just the right time. And that's usually when you're doing something else. It's when you're kind of doing these disengaged type activities like exercise or driving a car that you're like, oh, I should do this thing. And I don't ignore those. I don't ignore those little nudges anymore. And I feel like we all do have that intuitive nudge and response. Um, we just don't pay attention to it or recognize it as that. Dr. Nicole, I tell you, this has been awesome. Such a good conversation, really. I feel like we could continue this for another hour or so, just because it's so interesting to 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 hear your perspective on this. You know, shifting from physical therapy, the doctor of physical therapy, helping people, just doing that talking people out of your own business, like networking uh, program, which I like, <laughs> I, I would do that too, I think, because you, because you just want to help people, you know, you yeah. just, you just want to help them. And you're just like, well, you know, if this isn't for you, well, then this will help you. And I think that you should do this. And half the time people just need the encouragement, right? They just need the support. Uh, they know what the answer is. They just need the courage to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, tell everybody a little bit about how they can connect with you, how they can continue the conversation, ask you any questions. What do you got going on these days? Yes. I love questions, by the way. Please send me questions. I love, love, love to connect with people. Um, but I, you can find me, I'm usually in Facebook. I have a Facebook community and I just like that space because I feel people can be more open and honest because it is that private group. So I have the Express Entrepreneur Movement Facebook group um, at 
at theexpressedyou.com. You can find me. I have my email and everything there. So you could just shoot me an email. I'm happy to get on calls with people. I really create a lot of space to just connect. And I have a program. I'm not even positive when I'm going to open it next. I believe in April. Again, like I really just allow it to. Classic get, Ponda. Classic Ponda style. Get that from Cal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I believe it will be April. I, um, I'll open it for another group of women. Um, so I, I have a group coaching program that is a six month container and really just helps you to step into this. Like I definitely help you with how do you actually do this? How do you apply this? How do you create your own business plan from that? But, um, but yeah, so I have that. And then I sometimes take one to one clients. I don't do that too often, but, um, but I do that as well for special cases. For special cases, if you really convince me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. This is seriously, it's so awesome. This has been such a great conversation. I'm like, I'm so happy that you came and spent some time with myself and, and the roosters and everything. And, uh, and if you've got, if you have one final amazing kind of words of wisdom that you'd like to leave everybody with before we take off, what would that be? Hmm. There's so many. I have to narrow it down. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think just to believe that you can create anything you want. You really, really can step into that. Yeah. I like it. All right. I like it. And by the way, everybody that commented that they're in for the challenge, we will see you in 30 days. We're going to hunt you down. We're going to find you. Uh, that sounds fun. Yeah, really. <laughs> Maybe we should make that part of your group, right? Uh, so, okay. Gonna well, yeah. What's that? We're all going to text you. Please leave your phone number. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, okay. So this has been awesome. Well, thank you again so much for being here. It's an absolute pleasure. And, uh, and I had such a good time. So we will have to talk again. And guys, uh, thank you for joining. Everybody listening, watching at home, another episode of Fire Builders Live. Remember, we stream live often <laughs> in true Ponda style. I don't exactly know when it's going to be. It's going to be intuitive, and we'll see when it happens. Uh, but it will be regular. I'm thinking Tuesdays, Thursdays, or Mondays and Fridays. I don't know. Like, if you've got any suggestions, just shoot shoot it in the comments and I'll, and we'll, we'll talk about it. And, uh, and if you'd like to support the show, firebuilderslive.com, that's a cool place. You can check out all kinds of behind the scenes stuff and, and feed Elvis and all kinds of things. So, uh, so check that out. And again, Dr. Nicole Ponda, so happy to have you here. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. All right. All right. I'll see you guys. Adios.